before we get started, I just wanted to show you a quick preview of a way I use this material on one of the models that I'm making. It's not a finished model, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like on an actual model. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. So, you're going to want to start by pressing Shift A, go to Mesh, grab yourself an Icosphere, change the subdivisions to 5, right click and shade smooth. Select your camera and go to camera view. Go to your camera settings here, switch the focal length to a 102, give us a nice view of the mesh. Then if you go over here to the rendered settings and make sure you uncheck scene world and I have the forest HDRI selected with a strength of one. Then you can head over to the render settings and I'm in EV right now. You can also do this in cycles. It works fine, if not better. And then um, you can check ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections if you are in EV. And if you want your colors to look redder, always go down to look and change it to like a medium high contrast or something like that. Then head over to the shading face. Make sure you have a 3D viewport in your space and you have your node editor somewhere. That's all you need. Then go over here, go to rendered preview and make sure you do the same lighting settings here and then you're good to go. So then you want to hit new material. I already added mine, I just called it material. It has nothing in it, but yeah. Anyways, to get started, we'll press shift A, search for a noise texture like this. Then with this selected, you'll press control T. And if you don't get this when you press control T, go over here to edit preferences and hit add-ons. Then search up node wrangler, hit just check this and it'll give you all the shortcuts and everything. Then you can take this object right here and move it into the vector of the mapping. Control shift and left click to view the noise texture like so. Then we're gonna switch the scale on this guy to a one, detail to a 16, and the distortion to a two. This is basically the, gonna be the mask for where we're creating our um, uh, the cuts. So then we're gonna press Shift A, search up a color ramp like this, connect it, and then take the black here, and we're gonna flip it with the white. Then we're gonna put the white at about a point uh, 315, something like that, mine's at a point 314. Then you wanna take this black and move it to about a point four. We'll just put it at a point four exactly. And this is the mask for our cuts and is looking pretty good. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and create the color for this. So I'm gonna grab this and move them over here. And then hit Shift A, search up a noise texture, like so. Then we're gonna take the vector from the mapping, put it into the noise texture. Then we Control Shift and left click to preview. We're simply gonna change the scale on this guy to a 33.9, the detail to a 16. We'll leave the roughness where it's at and put the distortion at a one. Now I'm going to press Shift A and add a color ramp right here. This is going to be for our reds for the bloody parts of the um, uh, yeah. Anyways, we're going to take the black here and the position. We're going to put it at 0.28. Then the hex value on this guy. I'll go ahead and read it off to you two times really quickly. So the first time, oh, so the hex value is a four five zero. 006 again that is a 450 006 like that then in this middle node we're going to be putting that at a 0.565 so 0.565 on the position then the hex value is going to be a 5e2823 again that is a 5e2823 like that then this white we're going to be positioning at a 0.975 and then changing the color on this, the hex value all the way to an AC8281. Again, that is an AC8281. There we go. So now we've got our reds color ramp. Then we're going to press Shift A. This is going to be the color ramp for our skin of the reptile. And then we'll take this factor and move it into the color ramp. Then we can Control Shift and left click to preview. We're going to add a third node. And then we're going to take this black, position it at 0.25, and then the white will position it at 0.75, just so that we have them all spaced out like this. Then on this black, we're going to take the hex value and go ahead and change that to a 574A3C. Again, that is a 574A3C, like that. Then in the center one, we're going to take the hex value and move it to a 6F7355. Again, that is a 6F7355, like that. Then on this third color, the hex value for this one is a 475252, 
Again, that is a four, seven, five, two, five, two, like so. Now that we have our colors, we should have to tell the nodes where to put them. So we're gonna hit Shift A and search up a mix RGB right here. We're gonna take the color from the skin and put it into color one, the color from the blood and put it into color two. Then for the factor, we're gonna take the mask color ramp right here and plug it into the factor, check clamp, and if we control shift and left click, we can see where we have our colors going on and it's starting to look pretty good. Some cuts are more defined than others, which is how it would actually be. Not every cut would be perfectly the same depth, unless you're dealing with a saw or something and it's the same every time or whatever. Anyways, next, we're gonna be factoring in the bump of the mask real quick. So we'll hit Shift A, search up a bump node right here. Then we're gonna take the color from our bump node, I mean from our uh, color ramp, put it into the height of our bump and check this invert button right here. And if we control shift and left click the bump node, we can see that we are getting some indentions where the cuts are, and which is exactly what we want essentially. Then we're just gonna take the normal from this bump node and plug it into the normal of the principal BSDF like so. And then we're gonna go up here to our color mix node and take the final result to the base color. And then we control shift and left click the principal shader to preview what is going on. We will see that we have a decent effect going on here and we just have to play into a little bit more bump um, and uh, roughness and metallic a little bit. So to do that, we're just gonna take this noise texture right here and I'm gonna press shift D, move it down here. And then we can take the vector of this mapping node and plug it into the vector of our noise texture like so. Then I'll control shift and left click on this noise texture for a preview. And this is essentially, the, it's literally the exact same one we just copied and we're not gonna be making any changes to it whatsoever. So all we have to do now is press shift A and search for a bump node right here. Then I'm gonna take the factor of this noise texture and plug it into the height and switch the strength down to a 0.1 Then take this normal right here and plug it into the normal of the other bump node. And essentially what that does is if we control shift and left click this bump node, we can see that we're giving the skin some texture as well as the cuts a little bit of texture too. Anyways, now that we've done that, we should have to factor in the roughness and the metallic. So we'll press shift day and search up a mix RGB actually right here. And what this is going to be doing is going to be telling us where we want our metallic and roughness to be and where we want it to change. So if we control shift left click to preview, we can see that it has nothing happening right now. So we're going to take the color from our mask and put it into the factor. We'll take color two and change it to an all black. Then we're going to take the factor of this noise texture and put it into color one. Like so. And we could use this by itself for the roughness, but we want a little bit more control over what's going on. So I'm gonna press shift A and add a color ramp right here. And I'm gonna put the color ramp in between the noise texture and the mix RGB node. Then on this color ramp, I'm gonna take this black here and I'm gonna change the value to a 0.25. So it's more of a gray because we don't want it to be super reflective on the dragon skin because it's just not really that way. And then we're gonna take the white and move the value to a 0.5, just so we get something sort of in between those ranges so we don't get too much reflection or too much scattering going on with the light interaction. Then we're gonna go ahead and check this clamp on the mix and we've got that good to go. And then I'm gonna take this color right here and plug it into our roughness. So now that we have the roughness, all we need is the metallic. And for that, you can just take this color and put it into the metallic too. And if you want more control over where it's metal and where it's not, you can always hit shift day, add yourself a color ramp right here. And then make sure this mix node is going into the factor and then the result of this color ramp will go into the metallic like that. And you can give yourself some more space here if you want just by spreading these things out. And so it looks a little bit more linear and it doesn't look so jumbled. And then to adjust the um, uh, values of the metal, you can make the lowest be a zero if you want and that's what it is right now and the highest be fully metal but if you want it to be metal pretty much everywhere you can take this and change the value to like a 0.5 or something and it'll begin to start looking really metal but you don't want it to be metal where there is the blood because blood is not metal so you, i suggest leaving the black alone 
And if you want more metal, just drag this value in a bit and eventually, and drag it in until you start overcoming where the blood and the cuts are. Basically, that's how the, you can adjust the metal. But with that said, if we control shift and left click the shader, we can see the final product of our material and it looks pretty darn good. This is with 3D lighting, so it looks a little bit flat and it, obviously it's on a sphere. So I'm gonna go ahead and let to layout and we are going to lower the 3D lighting just a little bit to like a 0.5. Just to give us some more uh, color definition here. And if you are wanting the blood to look more um, uh, prominent, I guess you could say, you can always head over here back to the shading workspace. And if we drag ourselves over to the left and control shift and left click on this guy, to do that, all we need to do is take the white and move it in closer to the black. So something like a 0.375. Then we can head back over to layout. Oh wait, not yet. <laughs> control shift and left click to preview the principal BSDF. Then we can head back over to layout and we can make the blood look a lot more prominent if it looked too faded for you in the other way. But with all of that done, this is the end of the material tutorial and hopefully you learned something new and can use this on some of your models. So I'll see y'all guys in the next one. If you have any more material needs, uh, check out the rest of my channel. I use.